Currently in its 10th year, anyone who is anyone from the gaming world attends for the annual pat on the back, I'll show you mine if you show me yours, Games Fest. In fact, such was the demand that people were doing anything to get in. Set over 720,000 square feet, this is E3. The loudest, the biggest, and the best games convention in the world. First up, we head over to the Microsoft booth to see just what Bill's Black Box has in store for us over the coming year. With no announcement of the fabled Xbox 2 at this year's event, at first glance, E3 2004 looked a quiet year for Microsoft. But the truth is that this was the year Xbox finally delivered on its promises for console gaming. This year it was all about the software, and didn't they know it? Everything we do begins with software. Software is the key to unlocking the potential, the real potential of this industry. With that cleared up, it was down to the games to do the talking. Once you got past the hoo-ha surrounding the release of first-person shooters Halo 2 and Doom 3, there was a glut of great titles for the owners of the little green machine to get excited about. BioWare stood apart from the crowd with their exclusive action RPG, Jade Empire. Set in ancient mythical China, players journey through Jade Empire learning martial arts and mythical powers to help combat against the powerful human and supernatural foes you meet along the way. One of the things that's really most exciting is the combination or the fusion of the martial arts role playing, the action combat and the story. It's something that it's, this hasn't been done, it's something really exciting. Um, taking, I think we think it will take role playing to a new level by giving it a really great base action system underneath it. Perhaps the most intriguing Xbox RPG after Jade Empire is Fable from black and white creator Peter Molyneux. It's called Fable because it's a story that spans an entire lifetime. Your lifetime, in fact, as you play the game from young boy to wizened old warrior. It's tough to tell whether an RPG is going to impress until you play it for real. But from what we saw at E3, Fable's pretty lush. It was a no-holds-barred Star Wars extravaganza this year's E3, and much of it was tinged Xbox green. Last year, Star Wars Republic Commando was little more than a trailer. This year, it was fully playable and due for release later in the summer. Featuring squad-based action, you blast your way past droids and the universe's most despicable life forms, viewed from the distinctive helmet visor of a clone Republic Commando. This year's big exclusive for Xbox, though, was Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. Set a year or so after the events in the original game, it'll take you to another seven planets, with even more fruitcake companions offering advice as you waver between the light and the dark side of the Force. We were really sport for choice for first-person shooters at this year's E3, but one shooter with a difference certainly stood out. Epic have taken their hugely successful first-person shooter Unreal Championship and created an Xbox exclusive that subverts the traditional elements of the genre. Unreal Championship 2, bring a knife to a gunfight. That's the main phrase we're going with with the game. What's cooler than taking out a guy with a rocket launcher with a, a, a sword or a staff or your fist? Unreal Championship 2 will include an online element that enables players to chance to fight head-to-head -head in eight-player tournaments over Xbox Live or System Link. The buzzword at E3 this year was definitely online. Now in its second year, Xbox Live is planning to build on its early success. There are close to one million subscribers to the service and they can look forward to some new features. Voice and video messaging, dozens of classic arcade games and the entire EA Sports catalogue. So it looks like the future's bright. The future's green.
Now, it may be sexist, demeaning towards women, and prehistoric almost, but you can't beat E3 for the finest collection of semi-clad women on show. And unlike some other places, you don't even need to pay $20 to take a peek. There was a certain sexiness about this year's E3, and while there were a few sexy titles on offer, yes, I am talking about Rumble Roses, most of it emanated from the booth babes. But it's not as easy as it looks, especially when you're standing in front of things that some people might be more interested in, like a nice car. And our cameraman was more interested in a giant Game Boy than the girls around it, while Tron were fooling no one with their poor imitation of a booth babe. There were some other tips for buzzing booth babes. It doesn't help if you look like a weird goth, stand under red lights, are really too old to be that Playboy bunny, or the game you're showing off makes you look like one of those zombies out of Resident Evil 4. Fortunately though, there were some top booth babes at the show and we'll be counting down our top three later on. But however lovely the ladies were, there was only one pair these gamers wanted to get their hands on. A pair of screens. And they were spearheading Nintendo's assault on E3. After a lacklustre shown at last year's event, Nintendo came to E3 2004 ready to face off against Microsoft and more importantly Sony with a bundle of typically innovative, fun and ingenious products. At the vanguard of Nintendo's assault, their new handheld, the DS. Well, the wait is over. This is Nintendo DS. With a list of features as long as your arm, including touchscreen Wi-Fi connectivity, voice-controlled games and 16-player online capability, this pocket performer packs a hell of a punch. Yeah, the Nintendo DS is a really innovative system. I don't think anyone can say it's not innovative. The touchscreen pad is really what's so unique about it, is that you're actually playing games using a stylus of your fingers. One of the great examples they have is the WarioWare game, where you're actually, you know, one of the games is slicing vegetables, and you slice the stylus, and it's innovative. I think it will really appeal to the hardcore Nintendo fanboys. I don't know if it's really going to appeal to older gamers and uh, a much sort of more mass market segment. When I first saw the Nintendo DS, uh, I was very pleasantly surprised by it, actually, because I think when I first seen the specifications for it and seen pictures of it, I actually expected it to be a bit of a white elephant. And the whole thing was just really elegant. They had some really nice applications for it, and you had the two screens, rather than it just being kind of mindless add-on to attract attention. While the GameCube limps behind PS2 and Xbox in the home console race, Nintendo have a not-so-secret weapon up their sleeve. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shigeru Miyamoto. No, legendary games designer Shigeru Miyamoto hasn't joined a live role-playing club. He's promoting the latest game in the Zelda series, Legend of Zelda. Nintendo is always known for surprising people to some degree at their press conference, and the new uh, Legend of Zelda game looks fantastic. Super realistic, looks super hardcore. I think all the Nintendo fanboys, when they saw that, they just started screaming and applauding at the press conference. I mean, it looks really, really fantastic. Other hot GameCube titles include first-person sci-fi action and Metroid Prime Echoes, plumbing and platforms in 2D for Paper Mario, plus thrills and chills from the super spooky Resident Evil 4. Game Boy peripherals keep on coming and Game Boy Video allows you to watch animated shows like Pokemon on the move. Up to four programs can be stored on each cartridge, which plugs in just like a normal game pack. With competition from Sony and Microsoft so tight, Mr. Miyamoto will have a lot on his plate keeping Nintendo ahead of the gaming pack. Well, first and foremost, we need to finish Zelda. Then we've got a lot of ideas we need to bring to the DS. Then we've got our next home console to think about in the next year. A year of rebuilding for Nintendo. DS and Sony's PSP duke it out next year, but rumours of a much cheaper price point for DS mean Nintendo could gain the upper hand over their rival.
still to come on Gamer TV, Sony takes on Nintendo at its own game. And we see just what really turned us on at this year's E3. Broadband internet. Welcome back to Gamer TV. Loads more still to come, but first, let's see how E3 looks after the PC gamer. With Xbox Live acting like it owns the internet and Sony acting like it owns games full stop, it's easy to forget that the PC is still home to some of the most impressive software around. First-person shooters were hotter than ever, and apart from Half-Life 2, there was a genuine frag fest on offer at E3. We reckon the best of the newcomers was Brothers in Arms from Ubisoft. Announced just before the show, the game combines the intense World War II action of Call of Duty with more in-depth squad-based command, allowing you to direct your troops using a fast and simple interface. But that wasn't the game's only appealing factor. Every situation is like a combat puzzle. And when I solve it, it's great, because there's nothing better than seeing these guys get ripped apart by my grenades, watching my fire team tear them to shreds with their guns. It's very sadly and horrifically, but entertainingly satisfying. And speaking of World War II, Electronic Arts was showing off Medal of Honor Pacific Assault, this time fully playable. With the original European-based game being eclipsed by Call of Duty, it's good to see that Medal's move east has also resulted in more exciting tactical gameplay and a return to high production values. Meanwhile, THQ's stalker Oblivion Lost has cornered the market on murdering mutants. Based in an exclusion zone around the Chernobyl reactor in the Ukraine, you play a mercenary who has to hunt down radioactive fiends in a game that some were comparing to Half-Life. If blood and guts just isn't your thing, then The Sims 2 should keep you busy. With all new 3D graphics and a birth till death playing theme, watching someone going to the toilet has never been so good. It's very important to us to bring new gameplay to The Sims 2. So, um... What you'll find is that rather than just taking care of their basic, you know, physical needs like their bladder and their comfort and their hygiene, Sims 2, the Sims have dreams for their lifetime, and you're focused on what they want, what their goals are. Although the basic structure of the game remains the same, you'll soon see the difference as you zoom into rooms to watch the action close up. If you want to live your life a little more dangerously, then Warner Brothers' upcoming The Matrix Online could just be your thing. The game picks up after the third and sadly the worst movie in the Matrix universe, giving you plenty to build on. Also making a big impact was Rome Total War, one of the best PC strategy games on display. For both hardcore gamers and historians, Rome successfully blends facts and fiction and adds some pretty stunning visuals. Fantasy strategy fans won't be disappointed either with Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War, which looks very impressive indeed. The game's being developed by Homeworld Coders Relic Entertainment, and the emphasis is very much on all-out action rather than slow build and battle tactics. No less spectacular is the Lord of the Rings, the Battle for Middle-earth. The game looks as though it too will provide immediate action rather than large resource collection phases, as you go into battle with orcish hordes or the legendary horsemen of Gondor. And finally, what about good old Doom 3? Although the Xbox version was on show, the PC one was absent for the first time in most people's living memory. Well, the good news is that it's finally nearly finished, but don't take our word for it. Well, the PC version isn't here because it's back in Mesquite, Texas with all the guys that did software that are, that are working on polishing the game to get it done. 
With Doom 3 leading the way this summer, it's shaping up to be a good year for PC gamers. Next up, we see how two companies are aiming to break into the lucrative gaming market with their unusual pieces of kit. E3 2004 was definitely the year for hardware, and while most attention was focused on the portable beast from Nintendo, Sony and Nokia, there were some new kids on the block with a few surprises. The biggest of which was that someone had turned up with a new portable gaming device that wasn't made by the three heavyweights. Tiger Telematics were there with the interestingly named Gizmondo. Could this really mean that the portable market might not be entirely sewn up by the big boys? Well, you couldn't say that they appeared totally focused on the competition. Yeah, I've been around and they all look impressive, but at the end of the day, we have the greatest part here. And wow, I'm telling you, look around. <laughs> While other portable gaming devices have seen the limitations of putting too many functions into one machine, the Gizmondo has not. Opting not just to make their device a portable gaming machine, but also including a camera and GPS system as well. The PSP is amazing, all these other devices are amazing, but the Gizmondo is really like, just it's, it's mobile gaming and beyond that. It's a multi-entertainment device. Just what is mobile gaming and beyond? They weren't prepared to say. Another machine which drew inquisitive, not to say incredulous looks, was the Phantom. The Phantom system is like a PC set-top box for your television, allowing you to download content and preview the latest games. Yeah, uh, one system that I don't really understand a lot about is the Phantom gaming console that was unveiled here. It's, it's basically a PC for your TV. They have this really weird sort of keyboard setup where you kind of rest the keyboard on your lap. The keyboard is sort of on this 45 degree angle, then you have a mouse below it. You know, we're positioning our product as a gaming receiver. And overall, our company really is a service company. Um, very similar to the way the direct TV market or the TiVo market is. Interestingly, the Phantom doesn't include a CD drive or a cartridge or card slot, meaning its content is download only. Well, the Phantom Gaming Service is the first on-demand gaming service that's offered for people to use in the comfort of their living room. You can buy games, you can rent games, and you can demo certain titles. High hopes there that the Phantom could be the future of gaming, but some are more dubious about whether it'll be the start of the downloadable games revolution. So I think online distribution will probably come down the road, but is the Phantom the system that's really going to uh, make online distribution the next big thing? Probably not. In the words of nearly everyone at the show, just buy a PC. You know, it's one of those consoles that I just could never envision who would actually buy it. One piece of kit that everyone will be buying was at the forefront of Sony's drive for total E3 domination. Games industry giant Sony had a good E3 this year. With 170 million PlayStations sold worldwide, they currently dominate the console gaming market. And Sony's biggest news had to be the launch of their smallest games product. Please welcome the latest addition to the PlayStation family. PlayStation Portable. The most exciting thing in the next 12 months will probably be the launch of PlayStation Portable, I think. That's really going to totally change the industry. Although Sony don't have a finished production model, they were more than happy to show off the PSP's prowess, running a Spider-Man 2 trailer. Find Spider-Man, the flesh off our bones. Plus pop videos and, of course, some knockout games. Sony aren't neglecting PS2 owners, though, and showcased a host of new titles. Titles expected to be big hits on PlayStation 2 are Killzone from Guerrilla Games. Gran Turismo 4 from Polyphony Digital. The Getaway, Black Monday. Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater from Konami. 2004 is also the year of the platformer, and they include Fly 2, Band of Thieves from Sucker Punch, Jack 3 from Naughty Dog, and Ratchet and Clank from Up Your Arsenal. 
They followed this with news of an old favourite's exclusive return to the PS2. We are pleased to announce that the next iteration of this franchise, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, will be coming exclusively to PlayStation 2 this fall. Other exclusives such as third-person adventure and Tekken spin-off Death by Degrees, plus the fifth instalment in the Ace Combat series indicate that developers are still managing to bring the best out of PS2. And expect continued online support for the PS2 as well as new iToy games like Play 2 from Sony's London Studios. You're going to see another couple years of very, very solid games that continue to leverage the strength of these systems. We're only really, really starting to scratch the surface of what these systems are capable of, and they still have life in them yet. Disappointingly, Sony didn't comment on PlayStation 3, with many industry insiders believing we'll have to wait until 2005 to get the lowdown on the next generation of home consoles. E3 this year was, in one way, it was sort of the show before the show. Next year's E3, we're going to start seriously seeing next generation. So, another good year for Sony with news of new products and plenty of hot games in the offing. Sony have a firm grip on the games market and their competition are going to have their work cut out loosening it. Before we go, we did promise to show you what really turned our heads at this year's event. It's our E3 2004 Top 3 Booth Phase. In at number three of our best booze babes chart are the Nyko Girls. The Nyko Girls seem to be everywhere. Either they were very quick or they were reproducing faster than Pikmin. It's just a pity no one knew what they were selling. At number two in our chart were the lovely Rumble Roses Wrestling Girls. Rumble Roses showed its true class by being the only booth to have five girls in a ring stripping in front of a baiting crowd. Unfortunately, the mud and the wrestling weren't included. Now for the moment you've been waiting for, the number one booth base of the show. The girls from Rome Total War could have had total domination if they weren't so busy with grapes, while the postal girls could have taken it if they hadn't been so busy with Gary Coleman. Well, you know, she's going to resuscitate me when they wear me out. It was as close as a Rumble Roses G-string, but our winners were real crowd favourites. Topping the Booth Babes chart were the Cause Beer Twins for Crash Bandicoot. Unlike the Rumble Roses, the girls decided to keep their clothes on, which was a relief for the adjacent EA and Namco stands who feared structural damage should the t-shirts come off. A Pratt in a Crash Bandicoot suit was the only thing to spoil the scene. There's always one, isn't there? That's all we have for you for this Gamer TV E3 special. It was manic. It was louder than a 747 in a barrel. It was packed with more eye candy and sweaty palms than a lap dancing convention. But most importantly, it proved that this year's definitely going to be a good year to be a gamer. Until next time. <laughs>